In part two of the five common causes of sudden unexpected death that every EMS provider should know, we're going to cover the acute myocardial infarction. My name is Kevin Travis with Mastery Medics and today we're doing part two of the five common causes of sudden unexpected death that every EMS provider should know. We're covering acute myocardial infarction. So first let's talk about what a coronary occlusion is. All right. So coronary occlusion, the coronary arteries are of course in your heart. They distribute blood and nutrients, oxygen, etc. down to the actual tissues, the physical muscle of the heart. What can end up happening is you get plaque buildup. And that plaque builds up, it narrows basically the diameter of where that blood flow could actually get through to those tissues in the heart. So that means we have a decreased amount of perfusion, hypoperfusion, decreased amount of this blood going through. We can even get a complete occlusion possibly. This can be from plaque, this can be from a blood clot, etc. All right? What that hypoperfusion causes is something called ischemia. Now, ischemia is basically tissue damage, and that tissue damage is reversible. Now, if that ischemia progresses and there's not enough perfusion for a long enough period of time, or there's a complete lack of perfusion, that can end up causing infarction. And an infarction is just tissue death. This is not reversible. So again, ischemia is tissue damage. Infarction is tissue death and is not reversible. So basically, we have all of these different vessels that are going down the sides of the heart. And depending on which vessel is occluded is what kind of acute myocardial infarction we have. Now, an acute myocardial infarction means it's a sudden onset of this narrowing, this blockage, anything like that that's actually causing this death, this tissue death, okay? So the EKG changes that we will see associated with this is going to be one millimeter or more of what we call ST elevation, okay? So it's ST elevation myocardial infarction. So STEMI is the nickname for it. If you look over here at this QRS, our baseline is across here, and this segment right here where the QRS ends and the, uh, the T wave begins, this is called our ST segment. So if we have one millimeter or more, and again, these little tiny boxes are one millimeter, if we have one millimeter or more, that is indicative of a STEMI. We want to look for it in two or more contiguous leads. So two plus contiguous leads. Now what does two plus contiguous leads mean? Let's look. So basically our EKG, our 12 lead EKG is divided into several sections across our body. Okay. We have lead one over here, AVO. And down here, V5 and V6. Those are the lateral leads. Okay, let's change our color to green. And leads two, three, AVF. Those form our inferior leads. Now let's go to yellow. Up here, V1 and V2. Those are septal leads, and septal is the septum of the heart, all right? And leads V3 and V4, and this is sometimes described as all the way up to V2 through V5, those are going to be our anterior leads. So if you have two or more, two or more 
leads that have one millimeter or more of elevation be highly suspicious of an ST elevation MI. So that could be two of the inferior leads, it could be two of the lateral leads, two of the septal leads, you could have a septal anterior with the V2 and V3, something like that. Now the one lead that we didn't really talk about here is going to be lead AVR. So we'll just write AVR separately. Now AVR is its own special little thing where you might see some differences, okay? It doesn't have any true contiguous leads. Sometimes it also shows up in the septal leads, but just isolated AVR, ST elevation, you need to be looking all over the rest of the heart to see if there's possibly lateral and inferior um, ST depression, which might show up, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, and stick to your protocols on this because some protocols allow you to call an ST elevation MI cardiac alert on AVR and some do not. All right. So some of the symptoms you'll see with your acute coronary symptoms. All right. You'll see, of course, chest pain. You can see any neuro symptoms. So I'll just write neuro up here, but this is gonna be lightheadedness, this could be dizziness, uh, it could be syncope, stuff like that. Abdominal pain is not as typical, but it is possible, okay? Um, and this would be considered an abnormal presentation. Epigastric pain, something that appears such as reflux or something like that, it can actually end up being ACS, acute coronary syndrome, which is basically the symptoms of a myocardial infarction. All right, uh, you have shortness of breath is another one. Diaphoresis that's unexplained. And diaphoresis is just basically unexplained sweating. It's just a sweating that's not, not associated with like high fever. It's not associated with extreme exercise or anything like that, okay? It's just at rest, you are sweating, all right? And then the last one is going to be pain in the arms, the jaw, the back, the shoulder, all kinds of pain that just doesn't quite make sense, okay? I've even had patients where the molars end up having pain, all right? Kind of a little bit different there, all right? So if you see any of these, you should absolutely be considering um, a 12 lead ECG and possibly even serial 12 lead ECGs, all right? Cool. So if you guys enjoyed this content, please make sure you follow us uh, on Facebook at Master Your Medics. Uh, GEMS has an entire, entire section dedicated to a bunch of these videos. And then also join us over at MasterYourMedics.com.